Today we are here to talk about what to pack for your trip to Costa Rica. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing super well. If you don't know me yet, I'm Emma and here on this channel, we show you all kinds of content relative to Costa Rica from tips and tricks to travel and lifestyle. So if you find yourself dreaming about Costa Rica, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on our videos. So guys, Costa Rica is a destination that checks off both relaxation and extreme adventure. All of the things I'm going to mention today are not for any particular season. You can use these tips for all year round. Let's talk about sun protection. The sun here in Costa Rica is extremely strong and even on cloudy days, pretty much from 7.30 a.m. until about 5 p.m. every single day. We are also quite close to the equator, making it just that much more intense in comparison to many other countries. So with that, what you are going to need is sunblock. I do recommend you buy it in your home country because it can be a little bit expensive here, um, especially in more touristic areas. Get a good one with a really high UV protection. Another item for sun protection is gonna be sunglasses. When I go out on the ocean or to the beach, it's particularly important for me to have a good pair of sunglasses. Otherwise, my eyes are gonna be watering up, I can get a headache, and all those fun symptoms of too much light in my eyes, and it's just not fun. So you wanna definitely get a good pair of sunglasses, and yeah, even at certain times of day, it can be completely blinding, especially on the road, so make sure you get a good pair. A hat is also a really great option for covering your head. I'm sure we have all been in that situation where we have been over sunned and feel awful and end up spending the entire afternoon or evening in bed just feeling like garbage. And I couldn't stress enough of the importance of covering up your head, using a hat. Um, you can get one of these or you can buy one of these down here. It's more of a sombrero style and it will cover more of your body in comparison to just your head. I like this one, but it will cost a little bit more because usually they come with brands and they're sold in more touristic areas. But yes, a hat is definitely going to be your savior on this trip. You can also bring UV protective clothing, such as a long sleeve fishing style shirt. Uh, this is great to keep any direct sunlight off of your skin and again, helps a lot with avoiding getting a sunburn. I love using this when I'm out fishing or if I know I'm going somewhere with a lot of sun. It is all too common to see tourists after their first day in Costa Rica fire red from head to toe. Um, so these items for sun protection should be a top priority on your list uh, for packing. So guys, as you know, Costa Rica has quite a lot of rainforest, which means quite a bit of rain and lots of bugs. It's super humid here pretty much all year round and mosquitoes are everywhere at all times. You are going to want to bring a strong bug repellent, uh, preferably something with DEET to really work well. Um, and that's gonna save your legs and your arms from a lot of bites, uh, or even worse, a case of dengue. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want dengue on your holidays. The bugs tend to be at their peak hour around like 4.30 to 6 p.m., especially on the beaches, where you are also gonna be exposed to the noceums, and that is just a nightmare in itself. This actually can at times make the beach completely unbearable for some people because they'll just start biting all over your body and you can barely see where they're coming from. In the more foresty areas, you're gonna get mosquitoes all day, all night. And yeah, going back to the idea of dengue, honestly, it's not as terrifying as it sounds. Uh, we've had a case in our house this year and you know, it sounds a lot more terrifying than it is as long as you get it treated right away. But of course, nobody wants to spend their holiday in bed with a high fever for a week. So don't deal with that, get bug spray, and just cover yourself for that. So speaking of rain and humidity, one thing that you might wanna consider bringing is a light jacket, a light rain jacket, that is. And this will keep you from getting totally soaked during those rainstorms that just appear out of nowhere, or if you plan on spending a lot of time outdoors. Now, I personally don't use one too often. This is actually Luis's because, um, well, I just never seem to have one in the moment that I need it. And yeah, so if you're one of those people who doesn't mind getting soaked every once in a while, I mean, the water's cold and refreshing. It's not 
it's not freezing cold rain, so it's not that bad. Or if you just don't wanna carry something around with you all the time for a just-in-case situation, it might not be totally necessary, but um, you might wanna have it if you don't wanna get wet. Another option for the same reason would be an umbrella, um, something that you can compact and put it into a bag quite easily, something that's not too heavy, and you can use it as needed. I always find it's helpful to have an umbrella at least in a car or in the car that I'm using at the time, just in case it does start raining and you can just run to the car, grab your umbrella and you're good to go. Shoes, guys. You definitely wanna bring a comfortable pair of shoes that you can get around in fairly easily. I know nowadays there are some pretty fancy water shoes that are great for both hiking, waterfalling, walking through rocky rivers. These would be ideal because with this, you can pretty much do anything with them and you can be hopeful that they will dry for your next use. I also recommend that you have a pair of comfy sandals that you can just walk around, do light walking and go to the beach in. Uh, nobody wants sand in their sneakers at the end of the day. And yeah, these are great for getting around. If you do bring sandals, make sure you bring some that are slip proof because there's a lot of places that are gonna have lots of steep hills and if it gets wet, sandals tend to get a bit slippery if you get the cheap ones. So yeah, try to get sandals that don't slip too much. <laughs> so the next thing that I'm going to recommend to you is an insulated reusable water bottle. This way you can always have some cold water ready to drink. I find that I drink a lot of water, especially on hot days like today. Plus, the national parks don't allow single-use plastics anymore, so you can't go in with a regular water bottle. You need to bring your own container with water, and this way you'll be sure that you can be hydrated while you're hiking through the national parks or spending the day on the beach because being without water is not gonna be fun in that situation. Another good option for things to pack is a battery pack with an extra charging cable for your telephone because you just never know when your phone might die or you know you might be using your phone a lot to look for directions on the way to get somewhere or use your phone for music like me or your hotel or wherever you're staying the power could go out and you're just not sure when it's going to come back on so it is always good to have a backup just to make sure you're always connected to something and yeah, it's super easy to use. You can get a variety of different types. You can get one that's cheaper, one that's more expensive, one that lasts longer, one that lasts for a short period of time. So it's very simple. Usually they have a USB uh, port. <laughs> you just pop it in there and put it in your phone. There you go, charging. Super easy. Obviously, depending on which one you get, it's gonna charge faster than others, but definitely, this battery pack has saved me in multiple situations. Finally, this one is kind of random, but I know it's a fact that people um, sometimes will have problems with over sweating. So something that you might want to bring along with you is a body powder. Imagine this, you're walking around all day in and out of tours and your legs start chafing against your shorts. For me, this has to be one of the most uncomfortable and somewhat painful situations to have to be in. So yeah, if you have any concerns of sweating or, you know, having that kind of situation, definitely, definitely, definitely consider bringing a body powder just to stay dry and not have to deal with any chafing situations. <laughs> oh, and one more thing that I wanted to mention is hair ties. If you are a person with long hair, you will thank me for this because it can get so hot at any random time. Like I always just have one on my wrist like this ready to go because having long hair here, like the amount of heat that gets stuck back in, you can probably see the sweat right now. It's not pleasant. And having your hair up is just like something from heaven when you're in that moment of heat and sweat and just uncomfortableness. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you bring lots of hair ties because you're probably gonna lose quite a few as well. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a helpful thing to bring. All right, guys, so these are my top recommendations for things to pack for your trip to Costa Rica. I'm sure there's a variety of things more that we could list off, but we will keep it 
to this for now. If you guys have any suggestions, please do leave them down in the comments for everyone else to see. And if anyone you know is traveling to Costa Rica soon, share this video with them and give the video a like so that YouTube will push the video out to others who might find value in this information. And if you're looking for more Costa Rica tips, travel ideas, and lifestyle content, please do subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys very soon. Ciao.